Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Uh, I would say that winter finally hit here in Michigan, so uh, I don't know. I I'm not sure I'm ready for it, but let's just go ahead and head over to the shop and see what's going on over there. I tell you what guys, working with alligators and crocodilians is one of the most fulfilling things that's happened. I've been on and off working with them for over 20 years and had them consistently now for 10 years in my collection. They are truly amazing and every day I'm still blown away that I get to work with Salty Albino Alligator. I mean, she is truly amazing and one of the animals I have that I am in awe of every single day. But the truth is, is that alligators still take a lot of work. Take for instance Pepper here. I mean, he is certainly not as easy as salt is for sure. Uh, and by the way, I always call him a he. He is actually a she. And you can see that uh, a little bit more cantankerous and stuff like that. And a lot of crocodilians are that way. Sometimes you see an animal like salt and you're like, oh my God, she is so docile. It'd be great to have an alligator like that. But then you kind of see what a lot of alligators are like Pepper here. I mean, still an amazing animal, but certainly not something that you just take out and cuddle and watch TV with for sure. But he's still absolutely amazing and still one of the most stunning animals that I ever have worked with. American alligators start out so absolutely cute. It's adorable. You guys may remember when we got all of these alligators from Gatorland less than a year ago. They were little tiny, you know, 60 gram animals and look at how big they've gotten in just a year. It's really, truly amazing. They'll go 20, 25 times their weight in the first year if they're fed really a lot. And these guys certainly have been. And don't get me wrong, I love alligators. They're super smart, they're easy to train. They're amazing animals, and from an educational standpoint, they're probably one of the things that's the most popular here at the Reptarium, not only to hold like salt, but also to feed like these guys right here. And Chomper, my big guy here, is about ready to go back to Gatorland, unfortunately. We're gonna get six more babies, maybe next week, and then when they get trained for clicker, we'll send these guys down to Gatorland to live the rest of their life out. And trust me, we'll miss them a lot, but the truth is, is that alligators, although they're absolutely amazing animals, and they truly are, like I said, one of the coolest things I ever worked with, the question is, if you're ever thinking about like, wow, I think I want to have an alligator, my question to you is, are alligators really pets? So obviously, there's snow out here, so what better are you going to do with snow, right, than to get into a snowball fight? But I don't want to get into a fight, I just want to get Eric. So I'm going to kind of prank him, have him come out like he needs to help me unload some stuff, and then I'm just going to pelt him with some snowballs. What do you guys think? Can you help me really quick outside? I'm just going to uh, just unload a couple of the buckets out of my yeah, truck. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. I'm just trying to film a bunch of stuff, like sure, little sure. breaks and stuff like that, so. Sure. They're all empty now? Yeah, yeah. We just don't like that. Hey guys, well today we're actually going to be feeding our baby alligator. I really wanted to show you guys the huge difference it is that like when we first got them, they were like cute little almost puppy dogs. They were scared of everything and now they're like, oh my gosh, look at him. He's already ready to go. Get ready, Chomper. Stand up. Stand up. Good boy. Good boy. Now they're, they're so smart and it's a really rewarding animal to work with to be honest with you. But when it really comes down to it, when we first got them, we were sitting there going like, yeah, I can see why some people might think these as a pet. But now it's just like, oh my gosh, they come at you all the time. At any point decide, oh, I want to come out and grab you at any point. And it's just like, oh, oh. it's so frustrating sometimes, especially when you have a lot of kids around. You want, you want to feed them. You want everybody to have a great experience. And biting is the last thing you want ever to really happen around here. But like, yeah, I mean, look at him. He's, he, these guys are kind of like, uh, you get a bunch of boys together and you got one that always wants to show up the next one. It's the same exact thing. You get one coming up here and all of a sudden they, they, they go, he got food for that. Why did I get food for that? And then that all, so all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, my fingers, ha! Ah! It's an absolutely wonderful time with them, but yeah, for sure, they, they are, they don't make the best of them.
very. <laughs> Is this like Taco Bell again? I don't know. Duh. I don't know. Probably a McDonald's. No, probably Taco Bell's broke. <laughs> probably a McDonald's. I wouldn't want. Look at you. Crunchy tacos fish. are way better. They Crunchy are tacos better. are way better. They are. They are the best. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? It's gross. She looks like. She depressed. looks really upset. Yeah, she looks like. I don't think she's just drooling everywhere. What's wrong, well, sweetie? I'm so sorry. Yeah, Lori's gonna I'm kill. So Lori's gonna sorry, kill sorry, you. sweetie. Oh my God. Look at her. Dude, her dog I'm sits in the house. She won't even look at it. She is gonna. Lori's gonna kill you, Dude, Mary. I'm gonna kill myself. I feel so bad for You're what done. I've done. No, I'll give it to Mary. Uh, the pause. <laughs> Free spray. Can I get those numbers? I'm so <laughs> <sorry. laughs> Text me, Lori. Eric did something to your dog. Now it sits in the corner and drools. No. I need a tissue for her. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the alligator thing. You guys know that I've had RJ for nine years. Now, when I got him, I was committed to the fact that I was going to keep him his whole life, give him everything that he needed. We built this for him. We're about to build something even larger for him as he gets older. And, you know, I've worked with him almost every day for nine years. And the majority of that time, he's been extremely docile. Amazing, really. I mean, crazy how tame he's been. And over the last couple of months, if you guys remember, I'll put a link in the description to where he kind of went ballistic on me. Well, ever since he's not been very friendly, that's something that you have to kind of consider when you're thinking about getting an animal like an alligator. Let's go ahead and see what RJ's into today. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, you're in a... Come on, baby. You know, it's so crazy that he changed from an animal that was just so docile that I could just literally go in there and swim with him to where now he's just completely changed. And you can see he's just wanting to bite everything. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to just kind of tire him out just a little bit. Now, he does have quite a bit of endurance, but you can see he's he's ready to go. I mean, if I try to grab him right now, I'm going to be in big trouble. And trust me, an animal that is six foot, you know, over 100 pounds, is going to do some damage. There's no doubt about it. You can see right now he's sinking down a little bit. He's starting to kind of go like, all right, not going to put up as much of a fight. And I really think that this is a transient thing where I'll be able to break him of this kind of weird attitude that he has right now. But I have to just keep working him. Eventually, once I actually start to get him out, he actually will tame down. You know, I know you might be asking yourself, like, why do I even want to keep messing with this animal? It's because I know I've had such a relationship with him. I can get him back to that position where he becomes tame again just through, you know, this dominance thing, right? He thinks he can dominate me right now, and I just have to keep working him to get him to the point where he understands that we're still going to have the same relationship and again he went through this maybe four or five years ago where he got really weird and then he ended up taming out again after a couple months it might even be a breeding season thing it could be anything for that matter and you know safety is always the big important thing right you know you always got to be safe you don't want to cowboy things up I'm definitely not taking any risks right now. I know this animal so well, and again, he's just being a jerk right now, but he'll eventually submit to me and let me take him out. Just have to get him to the point where he'll allow it. There you go, baby. Come on. Up you go. Up you go, Marsh. Okay. Woo. And like I mentioned, once I get RJ out, he becomes a completely different animal. But certainly, you know, when a baby alligator is around, it's one of the cutest things you've ever seen, for sure. But once they get bigger, they're not babies anymore. That's for sure. This is a 100 plus pound alligator. And I think that that's the whole problem, is that people see someone maybe even like me holding an alligator like this and think, oh my gosh, that is so amazing. I want to get one of those. And the fact is, is that, you know, RJ is already over 100 pounds. He's going to get twice or bigger than this eventually. That's really not a pet animal, not a responsible pet animal. I mean, sure, if you have a zoo or an educational facility, I totally get it because, listen, there's nothing cooler than pulling on an alligator like RJ. He is so absolutely amazing. But with that being said, it's a big responsibility, guys, and it's something that I don't really take lightly. And I don't want you guys to think that just because I can do this, that you can do it. Now, I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm just saying that, listen, I've worked with alligators for a long time, and RJ is a pretty special animal, but I don't really ever think that anyone should get a pet alligator, and I'm not gonna lie about that. And you know, this is what I need to do with RJ to get him tame, is that, again, he's showing his dominance when he's in his pen, and when he comes out, he realizes that I'm the boss. So I have to just continue to work on him over and over again. The more consistency I can give him, just like I give consistency to salt and pepper, the more he's gonna eventually calm down and hopefully become the alligator that he's been for nine years for me. I tell you what, buddy, I love you so much. He's got to calm down though, because it's scary when he's in his walk. Awesome. 
Dude, what are you doing? You look like I you're up to no good, bro. I, just, I was laughing because it was you putting up part. It was literally me being like. Tardis. <laughs> Tardis. Tardis. We have someone visiting from the UK. Yes. And, and you wanted her to bring sausage rolls. Just a small request. Sausage rolls, they're the best. You can't it's like bring, this white. You can't bring sausage into a Listen, different country. I told her, smuggle them in. Okay. Oh, no. Problem. Hopefully she's get caught up at the airport. But, you know, it's yeah, not. They, you don't, know. they don't sell sausage rolls at the duty free. I was going to say, maybe she could buy them at the airport, but they have they like, like Rolexes liquor, but they and don't, like liquor. But they don't have. They don't have. I've never, never seen a sausage roll. Sausage roll. Okay. It's the best food. She, I hope she doesn't And it's good it. for you. <laughs> it's not. We went to Chris D'Elia last night. Dude. Oh my God. Real Laugh Factory. Yeah. The Latin Dude, that's an there. actual comedy club. Did you know yeah. that? The oh, Factory. yeah, it is actually. Yeah, it is. Uh, no, he was super funny. fun. But I tell you what, that experience at the... The theater, the Masonic, the Masonic horrible. Temple. By the way, I think, it, isn't it supposed to be like one of the most haunted theaters in the country? No, the place why? is creepy as heck. I'm in Michigan? Sure. Yeah, right downtown. I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if we can be held accountable for that, but I think I've heard that before. It is, 100%, I'm sure it we is. We gotta get in there. It was, no, this is the problem, you can't get in. It's because so it's such scary. a terrible venue. And we oh waited 45 God. minutes out in a line to get in the door after the doors were open. 45 <laughs> minutes after the doors were <laughs> open. Doors were open. And then get this, when the comedy show is over, the doors were locked, no one could leave. No, they locked what? us in there, bro. Well, there was a fire, it's yeah, There was like 1,500 people in there. But but with that being said, I want to thank my friend Ari, uh, the comic out in yeah, LA. He Ari. hooked us up, uh, we got to meet Michael and Chris D'Elia. Uh, here's a picture, terrible picture, but here's a picture. Oh, my circuitry, no water, blast! Of us with Chris D'Elia, so. Uh, That's awesome, yeah, man. That was fun, that was uh, Noah's 20th birthday, yeah. yeah. Grown that right was, up, not a teenager anymore. Not a teenager I anymore, know, right? Isn't that weird? It's time to move out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> before you know it, wife, kids, and a whole lot. You'll be overweight and thirty before you know it. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> great, great forecast. I know, right? <laughs> Now, I don't want to be a hypocrite and sit here and say that I should be able to keep alligators, but you can't. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that as a pet, that someone that has a house that just says, look, I want to have a pet alligator, probably not a great idea. There's a lot of tremendously great reptiles. I mean, even kind of bigger lizards like monitor lizards can certainly be kept in a house as a pet, no doubt about it. But alligators, I just don't think fall into that category because they get too big, they require too much space, and most people just think they're cute when they're this size, and they don't really realize how big they're going to get and what the response responsibility behind keeping a crocodilian that is 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, and sometimes they get a little bit ornery just like RJ had gotten when they get a little bit older. So if you don't have the tremendous amount of experience how to deal with that, you could potentially get hurt. And if you get hurt, that's not a good thing for anyone because we don't want reptiles to be in the news. And speaking of in the news, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Every time I pulled out an alligator this summer where I was like, look at how cool this alligator is and I'm trying to teach people, almost every adult that was around would say like, have you heard about that story where that guy found an alligator in the woods in Michigan. Believe it or not, there were nine cases of alligators found in Michigan. That, listen guys, they didn't migrate from the south. Those nine animals were definitely pet alligators that either escaped, which is not a good thing, or actually were let loose. As a matter of fact, in one case, I think that there was like a nine foot alligator that got ran over by a car in Michigan. It's just absolutely crazy to me. And what happens is it takes away from the educational purpose. So again, if you're an educator, you have a zoo, you have the facility, for gosh sakes, crocodilians are amazing and you can really reach a lot of people because they're such incredible animals. Nothing is cooler than handing a kid an alligator and them going like, oh my God, I got to hold an alligator. But that doesn't mean that I want that kid to go out and get an alligator as a pet, right? Even with us here, you know, we work with Gatorland with our gators back there, right? You know, so when they get too big, we send them back to Gatorland. Of course, we work with Chris Lowe's Alligator Sanctuary as well. We always have an idea. Salt and pepper will stay with us forever. RJ will stay with us forever, but we can't keep 10 or 12 adult alligators. So we always have a plan what we're going to do. We get them as babies. We raise them up for a year. We send them back. They send us babies again. It works great for Gatorland and it works great for us. So, you know, again, if you are an animal educator, make sure you have a key relationship with a place that can take your alligator. Because the truth is, I'm not bringing RJ to school shows. You know what I mean? He's not going to be an educational animal unless people come here to the Reptarium to actually meet him. So what you really want is a baby alligator to maybe three foot. So if you're an educator, make sure you get with a facility like Gatorland that's willing to give you an alligator and take it back when it gets too big.
to wrap it all up, you know, basically I just don't think that alligators are a great pet animal, and uh, I do think they're amazing animals, but you can always come visit RJ and my animals here. If you like this video, here, over here, is another alligator video. Here's an entire playlist of cool stuff on this side over here. You can hit that subscribe button while you're over there. Turn the post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. For me and RJ, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.